Good afternoon to friends uh, in, in, on the East Coast. Good evening to friends in the UAE. Good, good morning I to friends in, uh, in Los Angeles and Arizona. Uh, my name is Danny Seabright. I'm the president of the US UAE Business Council. We're based in Washington, DC. Uh, today, we are honored to work with the Arizona Commerce Authority and pleased to host a, a co-host a virtual trade mission to the UAE for businesses, uh, primarily uh, for businesses in the Arizona area. This mission is designed to provide Arizona-based businesses with information about doing business in the United Arab Emirates. Our speakers today will also highlight areas that are particularly ripe for bilateral cooperation, including in the aerospace and defense verticals. The hope is that this mission will serve as a precursor to an in-person delegation visit to the UAE during Expo 2020 Dubai and the Dubai Air Show. And I think one of our guests will say a little bit more about the Expo and another guest will talk a little bit more about uh, Arizona going to the Dubai Air Show. We have a great panel of speakers today, each of whom bring a valuable per perspective to the discussion. First, His Excellency Haza al Kabi, Consul General of the United Arab Emirates in Los Angeles, will offer an Emirati perspective on opportunities for U.S. business in the UAE. Next, Kevin O'Shea, Senior Vice President of International Trade at the Arizona Commerce Authority, will share views of, from someone who is central to promoting trade between Arizona and the UAE and has been doing it for quite some time with great success. So thank you for that, Kevin. Alan Davis, Chief Executive of Raytheon Emirates, is a close friend and partner of mine and of the Business Council, and he offers experiences of a leading U.S. company that is successful in the UAE market and has deep ties to the state of Arizona. He has unparalleled knowledge of opportunities and expertise in the UAE aerospace and defense sector. We have over 100 regist registered, uh, excuse me, 100 companies or individuals re re registered for today's mission, primarily comprising Arizona companies, but as I said earlier, also including some Emirati companies, as well as friends from the U.S. Department of State, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the International Trade Administration, and the Embassy of the United Arab Emirates in Washington, D.C. I will remind our guests that this webinar is being live streamed. It will be recorded and posted on YouTube, where we expect others to join and view the video as well in the coming days. Throughout the webinar, Please submit any questions through the Q&A or chat functions on Zoom, and I will be sure to try to curate them into the discussion. We'll keep this tight to an hour, so please do put your questions up in the chat or the uh, Q&A function if you have any uh, as we go along. Without further ado, it's my great honor to introduce His Excellency Haza Al-Kabi, UAE Consul General in Los Angeles. In his role as Consul General, Haza covers the U.S. West Coast including Arizona. Prior to his assignment as Consul General, he served as Deputy Chief of Mission at the UAE Embassy in Paris. He has also served in the Office of the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where he worked on Expo 2020 Dubai. Consul General Akabi, thank you for taking part in this virtual trade mission. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dania. I'd like to start by thanking the U.S. UAE Business Council and the Arizona Commerce Authority for organizing this special event and for hosting me here today. It's a real pleasure uh, to be here with Mr. O'Shea and Mr. Davis and with you, my dear friend, Danny, and everyone who is tuning in um, online today. Just a few words, uh, 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 Danny, before we start that. Uh, um, I came from a country where people of countless faith and more than 200 nationalities live together, peace and harmony. And much people uh, uh, back home, I have found everyone here on the West Coast to be laid back, open, and inclusive. Um, um, I haven't visited Arizona yet, but I, I've been told by many friends and, and students that Arizona remind them uh, of home. And they actually call it its home away from home. My, my little brother, Seif, was a student in, in Arizona for a few years. So um, I hope I can visit Arizona uh, uh, in the near future. Um, to introduce our, um, um, uh, to, to, to help introduce our uh, audience to the UAE, I have a short presentation that I would like to share with you. 
As a council general, I am tasked with managing a councillor service and assisting Emiratis in the United States. However, the best part of my job is doing what I'm doing here today, uh, speaking about my country uh, to you. Um, 2021 is a big year for the UAE. This December will mark the 50th anniversary of the UAE founding. Today, I will give a brief overview of the history that shaped the UAE so you can get a glimpse of the foundation and the values that the country was built up on and how this uh, uh, forms our friendship with the United States. Next, I will dig deeper um, into the ties that bridge the UAE and US from economic relations, uh, relationship to social and cultural initiatives and highlight some of the recent milestones that we have achieved together. Uh, I'm truly amazed by how similar our culture are. U.S. values like opportunity, prosperity, and community are also what guided the UAE leadership when the nation was established five decades ago. Next, um, when the UAE is mentioned, many people think of oil and they also ask, what is an emirate? Uh, well, an emirate is a small city-state and the UAE has seven of them. Each emirate, uh, each emirate had its, uh, has its own laws and customs but all seven are united under a federal government, similar to states here in the United States. Uh, the Emirates you probably hear the most are uh, our federal capital, Abu Dhabi, and Dubai, which is the second largest uh, city in the country. Today, the UAE is a diverse and forward-looking nation that is the engine of the whole region. Uh, we are focused on uh, diversifying our economy and developing the sectors that will drive our progress for the next 50 years. Um, talking about aerospace, life science, sustainable energy, and many, many other uh, projects. Next. As a result of this dynamic approach, the UAE stands as the second largest economy in the Arab world, which is no small feat, considering we are only 50 years old and we have 10 million people. The U.S. was actually one of the first countries to establish a formal relationship with my country after we became a country in 1971. And these quick steps to build ties led to today growing alliance. In fact, the U.S. has been the United States' top export destination for the entire Middle East and North Africa for 12 years in a row. The UAE, of course, trade with every U.S. state, and that's including Arizona. Last year only, Arizona exported over $169 million in products and services to the Emirates. That's supporting 6,400 Arizona's job. Um, top Arizona export to the UAE included aircraft parts, equipment, computer and electronics, and many uh, others. Uh, uh, and, and, and beyond trade, the Arizona relationship spans many sectors, for example, UAE Air Force pilots have trained alongside with Arizona Air National Guard to prepare for joint training uh, in the Middle East. But per next, but perhaps the most recent example of our cooperation is the relationship between UAE Space uh, Agency and ASU and NAU universities. As some of you may know, last year the UAE successfully launched the Arab World First spacecraft to Mars the Emirates Mars Mission Space Probe, which called Al Amal, which means hope, and was actually built here in the United States and in, in partnership with ASU and NAU. Arizona scientists worked closely with Emirati scientists and engineers to, to design um, an instrument which provide us a unique view of Mars, lower and middle atmosphere. In fact, the picture uh, uh, you see right now on the slide on the right is, is, um, is captured by this very uh, instrument. You know, the whole thing was a dream. When, when this mission began six years ago, the UAE didn't have any space agency or any scientists. The UAE launched the first satellite built entirely by Emirati engineers in 2018. And a year later, the UAE's first astronaut, Hazza Al Mansouri, launched to the International Space Station. So the launch of Hope Probe was a natural next step, and our cooperation with, with ASU and NAU strengthened the UAE-Arizona ties in, in, in the process, of course. 
next. Um, the picture uh, on the right you see right now is the close-up image that Hope captured of, of Mars. And the name of that probe hope fitting because the mission is providing hope to entire generation of youth people in the Middle East who want to apply their skills and talents in a positive and protective uh, ways. I'm personally inspired by women in my country who made up 80% um, of the Emirates Mars mission science team. This includes Her Excellency Sarah Al Amiri, the UAE Ministers of State and Advanced Technology, and the mission lead scientist. Also, last month the UAE selected uh, selected two new uh, uh, two, two new astronauts, including the first Emirati woman, Noura Al Matroshi, as you can see here in the, in the slide. Um, um, she was selected from a pool of more than four thousand applicants to join the uh, to join the, the team. Truly, these um, uh, leaders are creating legacy that will inspire the next generation of women scientists and engineer across the UAE and the Arab world. Um, the UAE also um, uh, leading in the way of promoting culture of uh, inclusion in the Middle East. I wanna go back here to the year of 2019 when we received Pope Francis of Vatican. It was the first time for a, for a, for a, for a sitting Pope to visit the Arabian Peninsula uh, in Abu Dhabi. Um, um, uh, he did a great mass in Abu Dhabi and more than uh, 180,000 worshippers attended his mass. Um, also, um, um, on, on that similar year, next, next slide, um, uh, my country hosted the 2019 Special Olympics World Games in Abu Dhabi, which was the first time for this event also to be held in the Middle East. And, you know, we continue to build on this momentum by supporting initiatives such as the Special Olympics Unified Champion School programs here in the United States. Um, also at that year, we announced the Abrahamic Family House. And the Abrahamic Family House is a new interfaith center where you will see for the first time ever, a church, a mosque, and a synagogue, all in one, well, all in one place next to each other in Abu Dhabi. It will be open to all and it will be a place for um, um, learning, and also um, to bring followers from different faith together in one place. Mm -hmm. Next. Um, the UAE also has a long track record as a leader in promoting gender equality in the Middle East. From sport and science to government and arts, women are playing a large role in all sectors across my country. More women are, you know, uh, 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 complete their secondary education and join university than men in my country. Emirati women are taking the lead in the public sector. They, 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 they actually make up 50% of our federal uh, national council. For example, here you can see on the right side of the slide, Her Excellency Maryam Mahiri, the UAE Minister of State for Food and Water Security. She focuses on enhancing the nation conversation efforts that combating climate change. Her Excellency job is an important one. As a desert country, environmental conversation is a part of the UAE's heritage. And you can see on the left side of the slide that um, uh, the UAE Special Envoy for Climate Change, Dr. Sultan al Jaber, met with his counterpart, Secretary John Kerry, in Abu Dhabi just last month to discuss bilateral action on a key climate issues. And um, uh, I want to talk here about one of their um, uh, steps is, is, is the uh, the world's largest single solar planet, Noor Abu Dhabi, as you can on the right, as, as you can see on the right side of this slide. Um, this project is a testament of our vision of transition away from hydrocarbons to more sustainable energy uh, sources, including nuclear, hydrogen, and solar power. Also, um, um, uh, in fact, actually, one of Arizona-based company, Source Global, is using solar energy to power a facility in Dubai and that will create a, 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 bottle water, a bottled water using nothing, but only uh, the moisture and the air. This, this kind of in, uh, initiative that UAE Arizona Collaboration is driving uh, uh, progress on sustainable energy and water security in the Middle East. And it's exactly the kind that of this partnership we are looking for and uh, uh, looking to develop between both countries. Next. Um, the UAE is working closely with many U.S. partners and international community to address COVID pandemic. 
early last year, U US and UAE diplomats worked together to ensure their citizens were safely sent back home after the pandemic started. And the UAE has provided COVID aid for more than 135 countries, assisting more than 1.7 million medical professionals worldwide. And we also contributed around $10 million to WHO. Um, um, and of course, we are leveraging our world-class logistic networks to help distribute millions of vaccines, doses to countries in needs. Finally, we cannot just talk about the UAE without mentioning Expo 2020 in Dubai, the first World Fair to be held in the Middle East and North Africa. Opening this October until April next year, the theme will be um, connecting minds, creating the future. Expo 2020 will bring together 190 countries, including, of course, the United States, in a celebration of culture. Um, Expo 2020 will mark a new era in commerce in the region, linking global businesses to 3 billion people throughout the UAE. Talking about here the Arabian Gulf and the wider Middle East, North Africa, and South Asia region. Um, um, if you haven't made your travel plan yet, I, I, I uh, extend a warm Emirati welcome to all of you to come and visit Dubai and see the Expo 2020. Next. To close, um, I'd like to say that the UAE friendship with the United States is built up in shared values and vision for a better future. This partnership has resulted in many historic achievements, and I'm confident that by, by continuing the work together moving forward, we can accomplish even more. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much, Consul General Al-Kabi, um, for those very, very insightful remarks and that wonderful briefing. Uh, I'd like to now uh, introduce Alan Davis, Chief Executive of Raytheon Emirates, which is a landed company of Raytheon Technologies based in Abu Dhabi. Alan is zooming in from uh, Abu Dhabi, so it's a little late at night for him. Uh, it's, it's after nine, and we really, really appreciate uh, uh, Alan taking the time to do this. Alan served as the chief executive for the for for the company in Abu Dhabi, the Raytheon in Abu Dhabi, prior to Raytheon Company's merger with United Technologies Corporation in 2020. Uh, previously, he was the chief operating officer for the wholly owned subsidiary, and he has more than 30 years of industry experience with over 25 in program management. So, a true uh, expert in the field here. Alan holds a Bachelor of Sciences degree in business management from the University of Arizona and studied aerospace management at Arizona State University. So we all know, Alan, you know the state of Arizona very, very well. Thank you for joining us today. And I, Alan, personally appreciate your friendship and your wise counsel and advice that you offer me all the time. The floor is yours. Well, thank you, Danny. I really appreciate that. And I will tell you, it is an absolute pleasure and a thrill to be a part of this panel. I am, you know, as Danny said, a native of Arizona. I was born and raised there. I went to the University of Arizona. I went to Arizona State University. I spent 35 years of my career in Tucson, Arizona at Raytheon Missiles and Defense. And fortunately and very blessed to be spending the last four years here in Abu Dhabi as part of a landed company initiative that we established here in the UAE. Um, Raytheon and Raytheon Technologies have been doing business here in the Middle East and specifically here in Abu Dhabi for 40 plus years. Um, a very strong partnership, but more importantly, a relationship. And that relationship is built on trust and shared values that we have here in the UAE with all of our stakeholders and our partners. Um, I spent probably 15 years coming back and forth to the UAE supporting program. But until I moved here full time and we started the foundation and the, and the, and the basic elements of establishing a landed company, that I really appreciate the diversity, the inclusiveness, and the culture here in the UAE. Um, it is a very dynamic place to be. It is a very safe and secure place to be. But more importantly, there is an incredible talent pool of professionals, a very diverse talent pool of professionals, and an insatiable appetite to learn, to grow, and to drive business. As His Excellency Haza Al-Kabi mentioned, 
they want to become less dependent on oil and gas. And so they have a very aggressive campaign, a very aggressive strategy on developing and establishing new business sectors across everything from healthcare to sustainability to food and water security, um, energy, banking, you name it, they are very engaged in growing those businesses. And so for us as a new company here, we want to leverage that capability, the technologies that they have, the innovation and the creative creativity they have here. I, I think the fact that they have accomplished their hope probe to Mars is a testament to the commitment, the dedication and the energy they have here. Um, it's a country of less than 50 years of age. And so they have a, a sense of energy that um, has no boundary. And so we're leveraging that here as a company to help them in developing Emirati knowledge-based leaders to help grow and develop their supply base and to leverage that technology and capability to take us into new markets and new missions that we wouldn't have seen possible operating solely in the US. So it's an exciting place for us to be. We're thrilled to have a partnership here, and we've had an incredible amount of success as a landed company here in Abu Dhabi and specifically the UAE. So, you know, I'm looking forward to the panel and sharing insights and ideas with the audience. And again, Danny, I really appreciate you and the other panel members hosting this and pulling it together today. Alan, thank you so very, very much. And I just want to uh, remind the audience to please put any questions that are coming up in your minds in the Q&A or the chat function so we can uh, be sure to answer them. Now I'd like to introduce Kevin O'Shea, uh, uh, Senior Vice President for International Trade at the Arizona Commerce Authority. And Kevin, I just got to say again how pleased and honored we are to be able to partner with you and your organization today to host this, uh, co-host this virtual roundtable. In his role, Kevin manages and delivers a suite of export assistance programs for Arizona companies to help them grow uh, their revenues, diversify their business base, their buyer base, and create more jobs by selling their products and services to customers outside the United States. Kevin has done significant work with the UAE, and he has led delegations of Arizona companies to both Dubai and Abu Dhabi to participate in international trade events in the aerospace, healthcare, and automotive sectors. Kevin has over 30 years of experience in the international trade arena and holds an undergraduate degree in cultural anthropology from Brown University and a law degree from the University of California, Berkeley. Kevin, over to you for your introductory remarks, please. Danny, thank you very much. And uh, I appreciate your reaching out uh, to us and um, organizing this, this round table. Um, it's a pleasure to be collaborating with you at the UAE, the US UAE Business Council. It's an honor to be on this panel with the Consul General and with Alan. Um, the UAE is a country that is, uh, that's, that is very important to Arizona. It is a country, um, as the Consul General said, that is 50 years old and a mere 10 million people, yet the year before the pandemic, Arizona exports grew to your country by 83%. Um, that also meant that year before the pandemic, the UAE was the 13th largest export destination for Arizona. So that for a country of 50 years and 10 million people, that tells you two things. Number one, it's quite a dynamic country and quite a dynamic market. It's also a very dynamic portal and hub for the entire MENA region. There, there are many industry sectors in which Arizona and the UAE uh, share um, uh, a great deal of um, uh, 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 work in the areas of aerospace, defense and security, healthcare technology, uh, autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles, agricultural technology, uh, water technology, um, and as uh, the Consul General pointed out, uh, sustainability as well. I'm, I'm delighted to be um, participating with a great Arizona company, Raytheon, on this, uh, on this panel. 
and also was really delighted to see that another great Arizona company, um, Source Global, was uh, was referenced by the Consul General. Um, so uh, these are these are two uh, of of our significant industry sectors, aerospace, defense, and security, and sustainability. But there are also a number of others in which uh, I envision tremendous collaboration. Thank you, Danny. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, really appreciate that and for highlighting those opportunities for bilateral cooperation. Um, let's begin our discussion on the many areas of opportunity where Arizona and the UAE uh, can, can collaborate or do collaborate. Um, Consul General Kabi, I'd like to ask you first, if I may, over the last couple of decades, the UAE has dramatically diversified its economy, reducing its independence on oil and gas, uh, and, and changing the economy, turning it upside down from one that is prim that's primary output is everything in a whole lot of other areas, uh, business verticals other than oil and gas. The UAE has become a regional and global hub for logistics, tourism, finance, uh, among other industries. Moreover, it is quickly assuming a leadership role in shaping the future of various other industries such as advanced manufacturing, ag tech, green energy, aerospace, and defense. Consul General Kabi, what sectors are most important to the UAE's economy today, both, both, both for the next year and for the future? And in short, what opportunities exist for Arizona-based companies to plug into the UAE's diversification efforts and strategic plans for the years ahead? Please. Of course, um, um, Danny, this is very interesting. I, I, I remember Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, said once, um, the UAE will, serve, will celebrate when we export the last barrel of oil. So uh, along those lines, we are focused on what the UAE and the whole region will look like in the next 40, 50 years. Um, as such, we are committed on finding solutions to address uh, long-term challenges throughout investing in renewable, clean energy, transportation, technology, education, health, water, and space, as I mentioned. Uh, for example, the UAE has emerged as a regional leader in renewable and clean energy. Nasdaq City is such a great example of that. We are making a large-scale investment in clean hydrogen, solar energy, nuclear power, and carbon capture. In fact, 30% of our electricity will be powered by nuclear th th three years from now. Um, uh, we see these transition as an opportunity that goes in hand with uh, our national vision for, uh, uh, for, for a diverse right um, 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 economy. Um, we are also focused on an, an, um, an investing and developing a world-class tech ecosystem in the UAE. As I mentioned earlier, Arizona exported nearly $30 uh, million in computer and electronics equipment only uh, to the UAE last year. Uh, making Arizona the key partner and supporting the UAE economics and diversifying our, st our strategy. Um, we look forward uh, to work with more companies from Arizona and many business in different sectors, especially in renewable and technology sectors, as well as, well as other sectors such as manufacturing and logistics, uh, which will help to increase the economy between both, both countries. Thank you so much, Consul General. The UAE has been the largest export destination for the US in the Middle East North Africa region for the last 12 straight years. Yes. Not only does the UAE purchase large amounts of goods and services like commercial airline and defense equipment for its own use, but its strategic location and world-class infrastructure make it a transshipment hub for US products throughout the broader region. Consul General Kabi, can you speak to the opportunities for U.S. businesses to leverage the UAE, its strategic location, its free zones, its world-class infrastructure, its rule of law, uh, and as a transshipment hub for their products much more broadly? Sure, Dan, if you just look at the map, you will notice that the United Arab Emirates' uh, uh, strategic location, its, its center, it's, it's a hub between the east and west and over two thirds of the whole world population, it's only eight hour 
flying away from, from the United Arab Emirates. Um, um, and the UAE also has made a major investment in infrastructures, resulting in modern ports and airports. Uh, let me give you a good example here. Dubai Jabal Ali port is the busiest port in the Middle East region. Uh, and of course, uh, Dubai International Airport, the world busiest airport by international passenger traffic since 2014. So our strategic location combined with our great infrastructure is why the UAE has emerged as a hub for global distribution for COVID-19 vaccine, as I mentioned. Uh, 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 as, as I mentioned, the UAE is working with the WHO to distribute millions of COVID-19 vaccines to the country's needs. Um, 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 also, I'd like to mention that thousands of US business chose to, uh, uh, to make their headquarters in Abu Dhabi in Dubai because of the regional uh, strategic location. Um, again, uh, myself and my team here at the consulate and our uh, trade office at the Washington uh, Embassy are uh, happy to assist any Arizona businesses to, uh, to take advantage of the UAE world-class logistic network and uh, our strategy location to start their business for the whole region there. Thank you, General Kavi. I understand you have some world-class airlines there as well that I've flown on. Uh, Emirates, Etihad. Yes. Uh, you have some major port operator called Dubai Ports World uh, that operates, you know, second, third largest in the world. Uh, you want to just say a word real quickly about those three, and we'll move on to the next question. I just want to give you a chance to give them a shout out. Sure, sure. You know, I'm, I'm flying next week on Emirates back to Dubai. But we've also added a third carrier, which is Fly Dubai. You know, with these three carrier, uh, 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 carriers, um, they, 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 they are doing just a great job of, of getting people and connecting people from east to west all the way to Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Thank you, sir. Um, Council General's outlined some of the areas where the UAE has diversified its economy as well as some focus areas for the future. Kevin, What's your reaction to these comments? What are what are the areas of collaboration you see going forward, and how would you, in turn, characterize the greatest strengths of Arizona businesses in terms of the goods and services they can provide that meet the UAE's needs and the needs of others in the region? Sure. Well, let me let me just say that when I bring delegations of companies to the UAE, um, I'm not just bringing them to the UAE. Um, and I'm not just bringing them to the MENA region, but I'm bringing them to the world. Um, it is quite common that when I bring a company, whether it's to the Dubai Air Show or to Arab Health or to Auto Mechanica, that I'm bringing companies not just to meet buyers and end users in the UAE, but they're meeting sales channel partners that will be their partners, not just for the UAE, but for the region. Um, it's also perhaps a... a a somewhat interesting anecdotal item. Um, I took a, uh, 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 a company to Glo uh, Arab Health a couple of years ago, a company that had uh, been trying to secure a sales channel partner in Japan for years. Uh, and it took me taking him to Arab Health in Dubai to find a tremendous sales channel partner in Japan. So that's what I mean when I say that when we bring delegations to the UAE, we're really bringing delegations to the world because um, the UAE is not merely a hub for the region, it's, uh, it's a global hub. Um, and, and there are just a number of industry sectors um, for which um, there is just so many, so, there are so many synergies between Arizona and the UAE. Um, obviously, um, the sustainability, the aerospace and defense, um, uh, healthcare technology, medical devices, um, uh, water technology, as I said before, um, ag tech. Um, and we look forward to bringing delegations in these various industry sectors, not merely aerospace and defense or, or healthcare technology, but we wanna, we wanna broaden that um, exposure of Arizona companies to the UAE and to the region. Thank you, Kevin. Um, very, very important. And, and your experience of having led these delegations in the past is really critically important for, for Arizona and for the success of your companies uh, doing business there in the future, for sure. Um, as we've heard, Arizona is a global leader in the aerospace and defense industry, as it is home to more than 
1,200 small and large scale, large scale aerospace and defense companies, perhaps above all, as we, as we know, Raytheon. Alan, what does USUE collaboration look like in the aerospace and defense sector, and, and where are the opportunities for future business for Arizona companies? And maybe you could factor in there a couple comments on the new uh, ownership law. I mean, I know you set up uh, Raytheon uh, Emirates as a, as a as a 100% landed company, but now that's going to that's opportunity is going to be open for almost everyone coming to do business in the UAE in the future. So talk about that, all of that, a little bit for us, please. Sure, Danny. So to your point, when we came to the UAE to establish the landed company, just less than three years ago, there were only five companies that were afforded the opportunity to have 100% ownership here in the UAE. And during that time, in three short years, that's now opened up to most all industry can now have their own company here in the UAE. You know, a very progressive business environment. Um, when you look at the capabilities and the markets here, it, it's really an interesting blend. Either the technology and the capability and the market and products are already here, or there is an appetite and a need to have the one the capabilities and technologies that are not here to be brought here. And so for us, it represented an opportunity to um, expand on our existing aerospace defense business here, but more importantly, leverage some of the technologies and capabilities that we had here to advance their existing defense and aerospace industry to allow them to provide for their own sovereign capabilities. You know, they're very dependent on aerospace and defense systems coming from the U.S., and their aspirational goal is to be able to provide for their own um, sovereignty. And so that partnership here has allowed us to accelerate that capability. But in the same time, it's allowed us to have access and be a part of some of the technologies and capabilities that are resident here in the UAE that we can expand on that provide additional markets, capabilities, and missions for us. And so it's been a very rewarding experience, beneficial to both sides, certainly, the merger of Raytheon and the legacy UTC has given us a very diverse portfolio. It's changed our company um, portfolio from 50% defense, 50% commercial, 50% international, 50% domestic. And so we have an incredible portfolio now to leverage across industry and technology here in the region and help not only prosper for the UAE, but drive business back to the US. Um, we have 14,000 people in Arizona as Raytheon Missiles and Defense, two large presences in Arizona, Phoenix and Tucson. We have about 1.7 billion annual spend with suppliers. And so that provides an incredible opportunity for further collaboration and opportunities to leverage an already top 10 export for Arizona, but more importantly, for the benefit here in the UAE. Um, I was trying to count the number of times we talked about Global Hub just today. And I remember when I moved to the UAE, people were thinking I was gonna be so far away. But to <laughs> His Excellency's Haza's point, I'm eight hours away from 80% of the world. That's a pretty good place to be if you want to have a global business or a business hub. And so it's a very accessible um, regional location to do business. And it's a very talent rich environment, technology and capability rich environment to grow and enhance business. Alan, just before I go to Consul General Al-Kabi about another question about the, the Mars mission, just if you had to say, just very, very quickly, three top reasons why American companies consistently choose the UAE as their regional hub. What, what, how would you, you know, just put them in three bullet points really quickly? I think it would be diversity, technology, and talent. Very important. Thank you so much. General Kabi. I'm sorry, I promoted you from, from Consul General to General. I meant Consul General Al Kabi. <laughs> 
Um, when, when Alan just mentioned technology and talent and the HOPE mission, that's, that's what the HOPE mission was all about in many, many ways. Say a few more words about this, the importance of this mission and the importance of what, it, what it's done for the UAE youth, uh, for the UAE population looking forward. Um, what, and what are the next steps after the, after the HOPE mission? Sure. It is really important, not just for the UAE, but for the whole, uh, for, the, for, for, for the whole region, uh, Danny. You know, whenever we talk about uh, a HOPE mission or about space, we always remember and um, see that picture of Sheikh Zayed receiving the NASA uh, astronauts in the 70s. Um, uh, um, the whole thing was, was a dream, as I said. But now, thanks to our great and wise leadership, and of course, our international partners, uh, uh, like uh, like uh, Arizona State University, the dream has became to a reality. Um, um, you know, uh, just last month, uh, the UAE announced of uh, two new UAE astronauts. That's including the first woman, uh, an astronaut, Al, Al Marzuki, and that's you know, um, uh, my daughter always talk about uh, that. How can we be an an, an astronaut? So um, uh, I really like how my country and my leadership, you know, built this passion and our youth, not just in the UAE, but the whole uh, uh, region. Um, and of course, like the whole mission investment uh, and this program will create new opportunities and career pathways for young people in the UAE and the region. And these uh, are many more opportunities for collaboration between UAE and Arizona. Uh, a partnership, uh, for example, um, 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 Arizona State University and I said, you. And I'm looking forward to seeing more partnership growing even stronger as we build our uh, access to the space. That's, that's, that's wonderful. Um, Kevin, I wanna give you a chance to say a few important uh, points about Arizona uh, as, as, a, as a destination. The UAE is a major investor in the United States, as we all know. One Abu Dhabi Sovereign Wealth Fund alone, Mubadala Investment Company, has, has invested over $100 billion in the United States in total. Where, where, do investment op, where, where are the investment opportunities today in your mind uh, in Arizona, Kevin, for a country like the UAE wanting to come in and put down reliable investment in a vertical in a sector with the U.S. With the, the guarantee of the U.S. rule of law, but also with good return for sure. Sure, sure. First, let me uh, let me ask answer the the somewhat simple question: Why Arizona? We're we're entrepreneurial, we're innovative, we're business friendly, we're tax favorable. We have an outstanding workforce that is uh, replenished by ASU, U of A, NAU. We have low regulatory burdens. We have a high quality of life. We've got abundant foreign trade zones. And of course, we have incentives. Um, that list, I think, is um, could, be, could be the same list that, uh, that the UAE would offer. So again, um, uh, so many synergies between Arizona and the UAE. Um, we have been the beneficiary of a regional sovereign fund um, for, a, uh, for an elect electric vehicle company. Um, and uh, look, look uh, forward to the opportunity to uh, additional funding for companies in that industry sector. Um, also, um, we are becoming, uh, not only are we becoming in a, a hub for electric uh, automotive uh, vehicles, but also um, a semiconductor hub. We've long been a semiconductor hub, but that is being further strengthened by Intel's um, considerable enhancement of their presence in Arizona. Uh, the recent uh, announcement by uh, Tucson, uh, 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 Taiwan Semiconductor uh, that they'll be building a facility in, in Phoenix. Um, uh, so, so those are two very important industries that are uh, generating a lot of investment activity here. Um, but some of the other industries that we've talked about as well um, early in our, in our conversation. Very good. Um, real quickly, uh... Alan, you raised before uh, why Raytheon uh, had, had chose the UAE. Say a few words about why Raytheon chose Arizona. I mean, you talked about the 14,000 uh, employees there. Why did you go there in the first place, do you think? Yeah. 
So for us, we, we, we have been in Arizona for 70 plus years. And so the plant site now in Tucson that operates as Raytheon Missiles and Defense, a part of Raytheon Technologies, is a legacy Hughes Aircraft Company plant. Um, part of an Air Force facility at one time. And so as part of the partnership with congressional um, staff and our Senate staff, both locally and nationally, it's, very, it's been a very conducive environment for growing and flourishing a business. We have some unique capabilities there with final assembly and checkout. We have three major universities with NAU, Arizona State University, and the U of A. We have an incredible climate, and it is an easy place to recruit talent. Um, I'm probably biased, but Arizona is a beautiful place to be. It's a wonderful state, much like Abu Dhabi, very diverse, very vibrant culture. And so we have had a very good legacy there, a long-term relationship with all of the stakeholders in the state and in the U.S., and we continue to expand on that. We have seen our plant site probably triple in size over the last 10 to 15 years. And so we've also had a very strong partnership with, with the businesses in Arizona. We do business with over 500 different companies in Arizona and it's a spend of over $2 billion a year. So it's, it's a very good environment and economy to operate in. That's outstanding. Uh, there's a question in the chat that I wanted to try to quickly answer before we move on. Uh, Kevin, to, for you, again, on Arizona, uh, what's the climate of the UAE regarding small arms manufacturers, manufacturers in a social and political sense? And I suspect, Haza and Alan, you can both say a word or two about this. I'm going to say right up front that I know, from my experience there, that folks are allowed to own small arms, but they're controlled, they're kept at firing ranges, and you have to go to the firing range to actually use your small arm. Is there anything either one of you want to add beyond that? <laughs> How's that? that? That's exactly what you said, Danny. You are absolutely right. So there is a there is a business, there is a there is an economy for small arms, but they're very much for uh, personal use at a firing range uh, for marksmanship and things like that. They're not open. Uh, you can't carry them out in the society. Yes. Exactly. Okay, excellent. So we've answered that question that was in the chat. Thank you so much. Uh, Kevin, what resources might Arizona companies make use of from you, from the state of Arizona, when looking to, to, to do business in the UAE? And how might the Arizona Commerce Authority support businesses interested in engaging more fully in the UAE than they all are, are already? Sure. We, we, we endeavor to enhance um, opportunities for our SMEs, particularly, um, to get into market. We're, we're delighted to see that um, the world looks to be opening up again. Um, and um, uh, as Danny had mentioned, we're looking forward to bringing a delegation to the Dubai Air Show uh, in November of this year. Um, one of the programs that I have um, enables small companies um, like a source global, um, but um, to, to participate in trade missions and um, to participate in um, trade expos and trade shows as part of an Arizona delegation. So um, not only do we provide technical assistance for them to do that, but, but there is also a financial assistance component. Um, we're looking forward to doing um, more of these um, delegate uh, missions and, and expos uh, uh, to the UAE and to the region. Um, and several of the uh, Arizona companies on, on the call or on the Zoom today are companies that have participated in those delegations and are looking to participate in future delegations. Thank you, Kevin. Um, Danny, if you allow me, I want to add something here. Um, um, I just wanted to add, you know, in line with the efforts to increase the ease of doing business in the UAE, and I'm sure um, um, uh, Al 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 Alan is, is, uh, is familiar with this, the UAE last year have changed and updated the rules of ownership for commercial companies. Um, so this change removes the, requ the requirement of companies to have majority Emirati shareholders or agent, allowing a full foreign ownership of onshore companies. 
So the UAE has also uh, 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 a number of free zones in Dubai, Sharjah, and Ras Al Khaimah, which, uh, which, uh, which companies can take the benefits of doing business there by a friendly tax environment and ease of setup and ongoing support and assessment. And sir, your, your office and the UAE trade mission office in uh, the embassy in Washington, DC, can, are points of contact for companies looking for, uh, to have questions answered for help, better understanding of where to connect in the UAE for potential business, correct? Yes, yes. You know, I, I, would, I would advise them, uh, Danny, to come to us, talk to us, come to know our country, our market in the region, and we, we will be like a, a resource for you. Um, my team and the team and, and, and the trade office in Washington, D.C., and of course, you and your team, uh, Danny. We will be very happy to connect any Arizona companies or business to start a conversation, a, a conversation of doing business in my country. And of course, uh, any defense sale to the UAE and any defense controlled defense commodity requires U.S. government approval. And so there's a whole process to go through in Washington as well. Uh, and we, we can help folks and, and refer folks uh, uh, if, if Kevin cannot. Um, I'm sure Kevin can as well, but we can also help with that. There's a number of questions, and, and Alan touched on this, and, and so did uh, Consul General Kabi, about education, the trifecta of, of, of a, a government-friendly environment, a promotive environment, a strong educational environment, and strong business uh, um, the golden, the, the research triangle in North Carolina has this, Arizona has this, Austin, Texas has this. Alan, uh, General Kabi, say a little bit about the importance of uh, students and education and internships in STEM um, that you're focused on with your companies right now. Um, love to hear a few words on that. Go ahead, Alan, you yeah. first. Yeah, so, you know, you're touching on probably one of my favorite topics here in the UAE. And that's our intern program. You know, three years ago, we had five interns in our intern program. This year, and it actually starts on Monday, we've brought in 17 interns. And the interview process is amazing. Um, the, the energy the youth have around technology, science, engineering, math is eye-watering. And so we've had an incredible experience with that. We've, we've got them across all of the major universities here in the UAE. We actually are bringing in an intern from, I believe, Pennsylvania State University to work here in the UAE as an exchange student from the UAE in the US. And so that talent for us is very abundant. And one of the foundational elements of our business here is developing knowledge-based leaders. And developing those leaders starts not only at the college level, but at the high school level. And so why we run a very robust internship program at the college level, in two months, we'll be doing speed mentoring at the high school level here in the UAE. And so for us, it gives us a, a window of the future and a preview of the talent that is coming up. And every year we've picked up two to three of these interns and hired them into our company. And it's just been a very rewarding experience to learn from them as well as them learning from ourselves. And uh, it's, again, as I mentioned earlier, the talent pool of qualified and highly educated Emiratis is, is, is eye-watering. Um, the other thing I'd like to go back and mention, Danny, is when we talk about a diverse culture or the diversity of the UAE, the UAE is roughly 10 million people. There's only 1 million Emiratis. And so what that means is it is a culture that has learned to work together. But more importantly, there are so many other people from so many other countries and cultures. It is another opportunity to network and grow your business and experience other cultures and have access to a network into other industries and business, as well as countries. Consul General Kabi, do you wanna comment on the students and the educational uh, aspect of this for the future of uh, development in the UAE? Definitely, definitely. We really appreciate the cooperation that's ongoing right now between my country and the United States, and especially Arizona. We have increasing number of students in Arizona. I think at, uh, it reached up to 500 at one time a few years ago at, at Arizona itself. Um, and I said my little brother Steve was, was, was a student there. 
So you can see the passion of our student, how they love to come up, to study abroad, come to the United States, get uh, of their knowledge and, you know, get of this life experience day to day. That will help um, us back home to get, you know, um, a group of youth people who have this kind of experience and uh, help to add in, in this and this progress of this country. Excellent. Um, I'm going to ask General, uh, ask Consul General Kabi to say a last word or two about Expo. But Kevin, before I do, do you have a last word uh, on on your planning uh, for your events coming up, your your missions coming up, your trips, and anything you want Arizona companies more to know about how you can help? Sure, I do encourage the uh, the companies on this call who are interested in the Dubai Air Show um, and participating with us to to connect with me. Um, one comment that uh, follows the comments of the Consul General and Alan about the, uh, the issue of workforce and talent, whether it's Arizona or the UAE, um, there's no greater um, component to getting uh, investment than talent. Um, you know, you can have all the available land and uh, all the incentives, but uh, without the workforce, without a talented, skilled workforce, um, there is a uh, there is no investment. Got it. Gen Consul General Kabi, you have the last word on talking to us about the greatest show on earth, <laughs> which is about to start on 1 October in yes. Dubai. Please. Starting this October more. until April next year for six months, you know, Dubai will be hosting the Expo 2020. I do encourage everyone from the United States, not just, you know, business companies in Arizona to come and visit uh, Dubai Expo 2020. It will be a great opportunity, you know, networking, not just for the companies in the UAE, but you will find people from 190 countries all in one place, you know, networking, um, um, sh sharing best practice. And uh, it's a great chance to start, uh, to, to start new partnerships with many companies from different countries. So I do encourage everyone uh, in, in Arizona to come and visit. And if they, if they would like to be part of the U.S. pavilion, I, I would encourage them to reach out to the State Department and arrange that. Um, again, I'm extending a warm Emirati welcome to everyone and come and visit and enjoy uh, uh, Expo 2020 in Dubai. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Kevin and I both have good contacts with the uh, U.S. pavilion team that's organizing our, the American pavilion at Expo 2020. We can help you. Uh, connect with that uh, pavilion as well. We can help you connect and get more information overall on the broader expo experience uh, uh, and how to tra how to travel there and how to visit there. Connect you with our great friends at Etihad Airways or Emirates Airlines uh, to uh, to get you on a to get you on a flight out there. So uh, happy to uh, happy to do what we can. That brings us to the end of today's. Uh, a uh, webinar, seminar, a virtual trade mission to the UAE from Arizona. We thank the Arizona Commerce Authority again for their partnership in putting today's event together. Thank you to all who attended. The, the link for this will be up on uh, YouTube and be up online very, very shortly. And those who did not attend will be able to follow up and, and get more information. We are a resource. Kevin's office is a resource. Uh, Consul General Al-Kabi is a resource. And I, I think Alan Davis has proven uh, very clearly that he's a resource on a number of levels for uh, individuals and companies that want to learn more about business in, in Arizona and in the UAE. So thank you all for joining today. Appreciate the time and look forward to talking with you all soon. Take care. Sure. Bye-bye.